What's up everyone, China's Lightning here. It's rest day today, but warm better than that. It's new wheel day. Let's check it out. So what are these new wheels? So I put some shorts up about them and I threw them up on Instagram a while back as well. Uh, basically, uh, these are my new favorite wheels. Uh, I've got a pair of them on my 3T behind me. Uh, as you guys saw, this thing weighs 6.8 kilos, super light considering how heavy the frame is and everything. But the reason it's able to get so light is because of the wheels. Okay, now these are the Kraftworks racing wheels. Uh, the ones we have behind me on my 3T are the CS5060 version. Uh, the ones I had in my Cirque before were the CS4045 version. I'll talk about the whole range later on in a minute. But headline stats, for example, the CS4045 version I had on my Cirque weighed just 1,176 grams for a pair of 40 mil, 45 mil deep disc brake carbon spoked wheels. That is crazy light. That's crazier than the Maverick Cosmic Ultimate. That's lighter than the lightweights I was riding in the day. That's lighter than most off the shelf production wheels that you can get. Obviously lightness isn't everything. Uh, there are other factors to a wheel set, but having carbon spokes and they're not going to be stopped when it comes to stiffness either. Also, with only 16 spokes at the front, they're not going to be slow either because we all know, especially on the front wheel, the number of spokes has a huge influence on your overall drag of your wheels. So before we start, if you're new here, who am I? Who am I to tell you these wheels are any good? Uh, my name is Joe. I've been riding bikes for about 10 years. I've been in China for 15 years. Uh, and I've been writing Chinese wheels for basically that whole time. I also spent three years working at Windspace. I was one of the founders of Lun Wheels, their wheel brand that made Hyper Wheels. So I know a thing or two about wheels. Now, the last time I was this pumped about a set of wheels was three and a half years ago when I first rode the Hyper Wheels. Uh, riding those wheels made me quit my job, move halfway across the country, and uh, yeah, basically changed my whole life. And then those wheels grew into the Hypers that you see everywhere out on the internet now. But back when I first rode those wheels, nobody knew what they were, nobody knew anything about them, but look at them now. And now I can honestly say with these Kraftworks racing wheels, it's exactly the same feeling. These wheels, the first time I rode them, gave me the same feeling the first time I rode the Windspace Hypers. Just like, wow, this is different. This is another level. And I'm gonna get into exactly why in this video. Uh, so the way I'm gonna describe it is that these Kraftworks racing wheels are kind of like the third generation of carbon spoke wheels. And what do I mean by that? So for me, the first generation of carbon spoke wheels was things like your lightweights and your mad fibers and your spinaches. So they were really early days just using carbon fiber for the spokes, but they were non-adjustable and they had their own shortcomings too. Now the second generation of carbon spoke wheels, I'm gonna say, is when the revolution came that a factory called Stren found a way to basically make a carbon spoke that could replace a steel spoke. What this caused was a whole generation of wheels where basically they took their existing wheel sets that had steel spokes and swapped out the spokes for carbon spokes. This saved them a whole bunch of weight but also make the wheels ludicrously stiff. So in this second generation of carbon spoke wheels, I'm basically including any one of the guys who are using spokes like that. You know, the carbon spokes are just replacing steel spokes. So you've got your Hypers, you've got your Elite Drives, you've got uh, the Fast Sports Vento, I think they're called. You've got the Magin XR Ultimates. You've got the Scoms, uh, a whole bunch of wheels that use this setup. But now these, the CRWs, I'm calling them the third generation of Coldman's Broke wheels. And what do I mean by that? I mean, these wheels were designed from the ground up to take advantage of the carbon spokes. So the second generation of carbon spoke wheels I was talking about before, they kind of just took the existing steel spoke wheels of the world and just replaced the spokes with carbon spokes, but didn't really take full advantage of the carbon spokes and the stiffness that, that brings to the table. And it resulted in, you know, saving lots of weight and making a stiff wheel, but how stiff do you want the wheel to be? And are you taking full advantage of the carbon spokes? is another thing. So for example, on the CIW wheels, the rim, they can make it super, super lightweight. Number one, they only come in disc brake versions. So again, stop the video, all your rim brake fanboys. I'm sorry, you know me, I love rim brakes too, but the times are changing. 
this is what we deal with. So coming in disc brake only, they can totally optimize the rim for disc brake performance. You know, things like the hyper wheels, they use the same mold, they use the same rim for the disc brake and the rim brake wheels. They just drill the rim differently. So this lets them save a whole bunch of weight on the rim. Another example is on the front wheel. On these, there are only 16 spokes on the front wheel. Number one, that's gonna save you a bunch of weight, but number two, it's also gonna help your aero performance massively. But the fact that the carbon spokes means that 16 carbon spokes can do the job of a lot more steel spokes. Now you might say, uh, but a disc brake wheel set, there are huge, huge braking forces going through there. Uh, how can 16 spokes possibly manage? Now, to compare it to the Hypers, and again, I'm not crapping on the Hypers, it's just that they're the wheels that I knew the best because I spent three years working with them. So on the Hypers, they have 21 spokes on the front wheel, but they're laced two to one. So a third of the spokes are straight pull radial spokes, which means those spokes can't really carry any of the braking forces. So for example, on a hyper wheel set, you've got 21 spokes, but only seven can really handle the braking due to this. Whereas on these, you've got 16 spokes, but eight of them can handle the braking due to this. So while it might seem like, oh, 16, that's shocking, you've actually got more spokes that can handle the braking forces. So the guy behind the CRW brand is a huge like product focused guy. He spent years working in the factory that was doing work for a big brand. Uh, I don't want to say the brand name because respect to him, he doesn't ride on the coattails of that brand. He wants to do his own thing, but it was a big brand. He spent a long time there. He learned a lot, but super product focused guy. Doesn't want to spend any time on marketing or any of that. So. Yeah. So when I left Windspace, basically a whole bunch of friends, of friends of friends, all came rushing to me to show me their wheels. And one of those such wheels was these CRW wheels. And I'd never heard of them, because like I say, even in China, the guy basically does zero advertising. And uh, the weight seemed too good to be true, and yada, yada, yada. But when I got them out, and I took them for the first ride, Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, it was that first moment where I was just a huge watershed moment and I knew this was something good. So I quickly talked with them to secure international distribution rights for these wheels because I know these wheels are gonna be the hot shit. But yeah, so understand where I'm coming from, you know, uh, not being big headed, but I had the choice of basically pushing any wheel brand or making my own wheel brand. But as soon as I rode these wheels, I was like, nope, uh, these are the ones I'm gonna go with these. But yeah, so at the moment, so now it's the uh, end of June, 2023. If you do any digging out on the internet, you're not gonna find much about these wheels because even in China, they are relatively unknown. Uh, there's a few provincial level teams that are using these wheels like uh, with black masking tape over the logos and stuff. And a few other racers who are paying to use these out of their own money and uh, again, covering the black labels or even putting their sponsored brand label over this wheels label because they know these wheels are giving them such a huge advantage in the race. Again, uh, a 1,176 gram wheel set when everyone else is using a 1,500 gram wheel set, like that is night and day difference. And even like the 5060s behind me, they weigh like 1,280 grams. Uh, and yeah, you've got a 50 fat wheel on the front, uh, 24 mil internal rim width, and a huge deep fat boy in the back, 60 mils deep and you've got the weight of a skinny climbing wheel and the aero of a big fat aero wheel. So yeah, everyone wants to get on these wheels, obviously. So CRW, they have some steel spoke wheels. Uh, they've been making those for ages, but the CS series wheel are actually like a year or so old now. Uh, the design of the wheels and how the spokes interface with the hub and the rim is actually patented here in China. So he knew he was onto something good too and got his patent filing in early. And uh, well, maybe it's best if I just get them out of the box and show you them. Okay, so here's one I made earlier. So in the box, first of all, we have this. So you've got a bag and in your little bag, you've got your tubeless valves and you've got these two cards. So these two cards, one for the front wheel, one for the rear wheel, they tell you the spoke tension of every spoke when they were built. They also tell you the seal numbers of the hubs and the rims. They also tell you the roundness and the flatness for both sides and they're signed by the guy who made your wheels. Because again, the name of the brand Craftworks is because, you know, it is a craft. And now I'm not saying that wheel building is art and a black science and blah, 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 no. Wheel building is engineering, wheel building is science, but that doesn't mean it's not a craft. Oh, okay, and then boom, out of the package like this. So again, the package on these things is also super unique. Uh, there's another piece of foam in the bottom there, the same shape as this one that has just stayed in the box. But yeah, in the middle, you've got these cigar-like looking things to keep the whole thing in shape and safe. 
So let's have a bit of an unboxing. Okay, so boom, out of the box. Like I say, this is the 4045 version. So 40 mil at the front and a 45 mil at the rear. Uh, 21 mil internal rim width, uh, 29 millimeter at the fattest part, and then I think tapers down to like 28 millimeters at the brake track or whatever. The hub is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's been lots of machining to get it down as light as possible on the free hub body. Also an anti-bite guard in there. Uh, maybe you don't need it, but it's better to have one than not have one. We all want to hear the free hub soundtrack right out the gate. So that is a 36 tooth DT Swiss style star ratchet in there. Sounds angry. Okay, and this is the bit that I was talking about, the kind of like the, where the magic source happens. Uh, now the spokes are actually screwed into the hub flange on this end, which has two main advantages. Number one, they're not gonna twist. So obviously early versions of Hypers, they had the issue with your spokes twisting and then, uh oh, they're not aero anymore. But number two, it means that if you lose spoke tension for whatever reason, it means they can't fall out of the hub. So lots of these carbon spoked wheels out there, and this is something Peak Talk has talked about on his channel before, uh, this head of the spoke is kind of just hooked into the hub. Like if you release the tension, it will pop out from the flange and obviously that's not good. So you hit a pothole or something, the whole rim gets deformed. And then as it gets deformed, these spokes are suddenly not under tension and they're essentially free to fall out of the hub here. Now with this screw design, that's not gonna happen. Uh, obviously you might be thinking, okay, well how strong is the threads here? I'm glad you asked. Uh, I asked as well and they sent me their test videos. When you pull from the head of the spoke and the other end is mounted in the hub like this, it goes way above uh, 300 kilograms of force before anything fails. And I think it's actually the spoke that fails before the, the join in here. For reference, a normal spoke snaps at like 250 kilograms of force. So you're way above that. The finish of the rims. So they have a clear coat on here, but as you look through the clear coat, you can see the layup of the carbon and it is gorgeous. Uh, the logos are this kind of like bronze color, bronzy gold color. Uh, the logos are underneath the clear coat, so before you ask, you can't take them off, but they are pretty subtle, and uh, when you're riding it along, especially, like, they don't really stand out or hurt your eyes or anything. Uh, one thing I spotted on the early batches, including this one, uh, so it says maximum pressure, 120 PSI, but maximum was spelt wrong. Again, the guy behind this wheel is not focusing on his English, he's focusing on making the best wheels he can. So I'll point out things like that, we'll get that changed and uh, he can focus on doing the wheels. The size of the flange, not tiny by any means, but also not as huge as some brands. Uh, but again, with carbon spokes, you've got so much inherent stiffness from the carbon spokes that you don't really need a crazy flange to build in lateral stiffness. Uh, the angle that the spokes are coming out of the hub, again, optimized for power transfer and braking load transfer. Uh, ceramic bearings, I know some people are fans and some people aren't a fan, but as I talk about the wheels, I'll just let them spin at the speed so we can see. Uh, super nice feeling of the of the bearings, No, uh, don't feel rutted or anything. Uh, these rims are obviously balanced or counterbalanced, I should say, so they're actually unbalanced when you've not got a tubeless valve or a tire valve in there, but when you put it in there, they will be balanced. Uh, also, the spokes don't touch each other, so again, you've got no risk of squeaky squeaky spokes. Again, maybe earlier versions of Hypers suffered from that. And again, I'm not anti-Hyper, I'm not shitting on Hypers, it's just I worked there for three years, so obviously I know a lot about them. Let's have a look at the front wheel, and again, I never get over how just light these feel, especially the front wheel. Uh, the front wheel, they went one step crazy with the weight reduction. So the splines for the front brake rotor, so these are center lock. Uh, the splines, only like 50% of the splines are there. And again, that's just to save a little bit of weight because you get rid of that tiny bit of spline from 50% of here. So cutting off grams where they can. And again, you might be thinking, oh, taking splines off the brake rotor surface, that sounds dangerous. Uh, once you tighten up the lock ring to spec, I'm told by peak torque, no less, uh, the force isn't actually going through the splines anyway. It's going through the clamping force of the, you know, the shoulder of the rotor on the hub. Uh, the spoke angle, not as extreme as the rear wheel, obviously to add a bit more lateral stiffness that you lost by getting rid of the radial spoke. So again, they thought of everything and uh, yeah, really taking advantage of the properties of carbon spokes, which is why I'm calling them 
third generation carbon spoke wheels. Uh, I should note as well that they come with a tubeless tape pre-installed and it's a very good job as well. Uh, so one customer brought them from Panda Podium a few weeks back. I saw he put a review up on weight weakness like two or three days ago and he said the tubeless tape was installed so well that he thought there was no tubeless tape and almost started installing his own tubeless tape until he eventually found the end of it. So yeah, uh, credit, to, credit to the guy who installed the tubeless tape on this. Uh, speaking of that weight weakness review, I'll put a link down below to it. As I said, uh, we've only been selling these for uh, less than a month now, whatever, so there's not that many people riding them out there. I'm sure that's gonna change after this video goes live. Uh, but yeah, the one guy, paying customer, like bought them off the website, yada, yada, yada. Uh, he put his review up on there, first thoughts or whatever, and there were some great one lines in there. Uh, let me find the review for you. Uh, so again, uh, this one liner in here, so he is describing the ride feel and he says, he says, this is where it gets interesting. These wheels are so light and smooth, I had to actually look down at the road to make sure I was on the road and not actually hovering. And yeah, uh, I can totally attest to what he's saying. These things, the weight. Uh, I think a good chunk of you have maybe already ridden carbon spoke wheels or second generation carbon spoke wheels. And you already know like the big jump it was from like steel spoke wheels to second generation carbon spoke wheels. Like it's as big a jump from the second gen carbon spoke wheels to these third gen carbon spoke wheels. So uh, if you can imagine that, that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, some other details, just going through my notes here. So uh, the bearings. So they use 6802 bearings in the free hub body and all the other bearings are 6902 bearings. And the hubs are easily serviceable. You can pull off the end caps like you can on a DT Swiss style hub. Uh, also the customer from before I was talking about, the weight weakness review guy, he went from DT Swiss 180 hubs I think and swapped to these wheels. He said he didn't have to retune his gears and he didn't have to readjust his brakes. So spot on for specs in terms of that stuff, which is really useful if you're swapping wheels in and out all the time. Uh, also in my notes is to talk about the weights. So there are three models, which I'll go into the differences in a minute, but the CS4045s, front wheel 40, rear wheel 45, 21 mil internal width front and rear, uh, they are 1,180 grams. Second in the lineup, the CS5055s, so 50 deep at the front, 55 deep at the rear, and again, 21 mil internal front and rear. Uh, those are 1,250 grams. And then kind of like the fat boys of the bunch, uh, the CS5060s, so they're 50 deep at the front, 60 deep at the rear. The front wheel is like the super fat boy, the 25 mil internal rim width, and the widest point on the outside is like 34 millimeters. So huge, huge, huge wheel. Uh, that guy weighs 1,290 grams for the pair. And that's the pair that I've got on here. And this whole bike weighs just 6.8 kilos. So yeah. Uh, so I've ridden uh, two out of three of the range. I've ridden the CS4045s and I've ridden these, the CS5060s, and the CS5055s so I've not ridden, but I imagine they're somewhere in the middle. What can I say about the ride impressions? Again, this is all subjective and yada, 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 uh, but one crazy thing is just how well these wheels accelerate. So again, the rims are kind of like the secret sauce and what is super, super light. As we all know, moments of inertia, you want any weight that you do have to be as close to the middle as you can. Any weight on the rim, any weight on the tire is where you're gonna feel it the most. So these things having super light rims, you can really feel that when you step on the pedals and they just accelerate up to speed. Uh, obviously the flip side of that is that you have less inertia, so you know, but you know, that's basic physics, that's a flywheel. But uh, if you're doing lots of climbing or if you're doing a crit race with lots of accelerating and braking, accelerating and braking, then you're really gonna feel that inertia or lack thereof. And again, if you're on a steep climb, so around here in Shaman, we are blessed, quote unquote, with lots of super steep climbs. And in my opinion, that is where you can really feel the difference between A, weight, and B, the carbon spoke versus steel spoke stiffness. Uh, because I've also ridden like sub 1000 gram rim brake wheel sets before, and yeah, they feel super nice and light, but when your cadence gets really low and the torque's going through it, you can feel the floppiness of the wheel. But with these being carbon spokes, you don't get that. Uh, everything swings and roundabouts though, and I'm here to tell you advantages and disadvantages. One disadvantage I will say of this setup is that the front wheel does feel more twitchy. Now the stability of your front wheel is obviously two things. Number one, it's the aerodynamics, but number two, it's that flywheel effect. And just because your whole rim of your wheel now has such little mass, the same amount of force applied to the rim is gonna have a bigger effect on the wheel. Now, they're not twitchy like you feel, you're gonna end up in a ditch, like because of the fat shape of them, especially the 50 to the 60s. When the wheel does stall, it's more predictable and less dramatic, but you do feel that force on the front wheel.
So again, I'm always going to tell you guys the advantages and disadvantages of everything. Uh, this compared to something else, the front wheel does feel more twitchy just because you've got that less inertia. For me, I'm a lightweight guy as you guys know and riding around in these 50s, 60s here in Shaman next to the seaside, the, the twitchiness is never so much that I feel like I'm in danger. Like you can feel it, but it's fully controllable. Uh, yeah, but my ride impressions are just one part of it. Uh, below, I'll put some links. I think there's like two or three customers now who've written reviews or whatever. I'll put those links down below so you can hear those impressions of how to ride because yeah, I'm just one guy and yeah, we'll get more people's impressions. And uh, one thing I really do want to stress though is like uh, people will think, oh, you're just super excited and over dramatic about these wheels because you're selling them. It's like, no, I'm selling these wheels because I'm super excited about these wheels. So that's one thing I want people to know. Uh, so one other question that might pop up is like, which one is for me? So my thinking these days is that you kind of have to work backwards. Like, what do you need in terms of tire size? So think about the kind of riding you do, think about the kind of roads you ride on, and then choose your tire size. So I did a poll on my Instagram of the day, and most of you guys are now riding 28s. Uh, that's crazy to me how quickly it's gone to 28s, but it is what it is. Now, if you're riding 28 mil tires, I would gravitate between, towards the CS50 60s. Uh, I've got 28 millimeter tires on here and the transition between the wheel and tire is probably the best I've seen of any wheel with a 28 mil tire on it. Uh, I'll try to put some shots in because that transition is butter. Uh, for this front wheel being so fat, the minimum tire you can use in it, they say is a 26 mil. So obviously if you're using a, a 26, a 28, or a 32 you'll be absolutely fine with that now if you're on 25s i'm still a fan of 25 mil tires i'd probably gravitate more towards the cs 4045s or the cs 5055s if you like climbing and you want absolutely lightweight go for the cs 4045s if you want a bit more aero and you're not stuffed about that extra 60 70 gram penalty go for the cs 5055 uh, now those two wheels aren't thin by any mean you know 21 mil internal width is still plenty wide you can still run 28s on them no problem so if you're on 28 mil tires i think you can go either way but if you're on 32 mil tires go for the fatter boys if you're on 25 mil tires go for the thinner boys now obviously as a super light product what everyone always thinks of is fragile etc uh, but uh, anecdotally, I can share a story. One of the guys here is actually one of the guys who I said is using these wheels to race, even though he should be using other, other brands wheels. Uh, so I'll put in this video here. He had a crash the other day. And after this, this crash was pretty bad. Like he's this guy you see going up here. And uh, after the crash, he got up and was able to ride away and finish the race. But obviously everything has a weight limit. Uh, the weight limit on these for rider plus bike plus everything you're carrying, whatever, the system weight limit is 100 kilograms, which I guess is 220 pounds, right? So a 100 kilogram weight limit for your, uh, for your system weight. And they test at above and beyond that, but you have to draw a line in the sand somewhere and they drew it at 100 kilograms. There's a lot more that I think I'll go into in a future video about stiffness of wheels and is stiffer better. And there's a whole thing with uh, wheels being too stiff where basically as you're riding through the dead stroke of the pedal stroke, usually on a traditional wheel, when you're in the power stroke, the wheel kind of like acts as a battery and gets some torsion in there. And then when you're in the dead stroke of the wheel stroke, it gives it back to you. Uh, whereas on these super stiff, like second generation carbon wheels, you don't get that effect, which is why some people feel with these carbon spoked wheels that you feel like you're always like, you can't get on top of the gear. Now, so far in my experience, you don't get that so much on these wheels, but I don't have a like for like comparison because I'm using different bikes and different tires, etc. But that's a whole rabbit hole that will go down in a future video. Uh, oh, and the price of the wheels. Uh, so we're at 1,680 US dollars. Now, again, that's starting to get a bit more expensive, but on these wheels, you're using a lot of more exotic stuff. Yeah, you've got a lot of high modulus fibers in there. And also you've got a 7076 T6 uh, aluminum, I think. And obviously all that machining that goes into the hubs uh, is not cheap. It's all costs, right? So yeah, $1,680 for a wheel set is definitely not cheap, but I threw together this graph, which I'll share with you now. So this is price to weight. On the left axis here, we have the price in US dollars. And on the bottom axis here, we have the weight in grams. And then, so this blue line is the trend line. So obviously the trend is that the more you pay, the lighter you get. And then if you look, 
uh, the further below this line you are, the better kind of value for money you are, and the further up this line you are, the kind of worse value for money you are. Uh, so again, uh, if you look over here, I don't have any Western brands on here, but over here on the very right, we have the Roval Rapides, and they're obviously quite far above the line because, hey, Western brand, you're paying for Sagan's haircut, I don't know. Uh, and then below, the, uh, below this line, the further away from this line you are, obviously the better value for money you are. And again, so example for here, you have the Elite Drive 50D wheels. Everyone knows this is a good bang for the buck wheel. But if you look down here, way out of field on the left is the CRW Works CS5055. So not even the lightest wheel. And yeah, that is as far below the line as you can get. So, so yeah, uh, obviously weight isn't everything in value for money, but I think in my opinion, it's a fairly good indicator because to get a hub lighter, you have to use better materials and spend more time seeing seeing it, which is all money. To get a rim lighter, you also need a higher quality carbon and also spend more time on the layup with using more smaller pieces of carbon. So it's a pretty good indicator of the production cost of a wheel. And in theory, the production cost of a wheel should be related to the, uh, the sales cost of the wheel. Uh, up here on the left, by the way, is the, uh, the lightweight Obermeyers, I believe. So yeah, $8,000 wheel, so over there. Uh, so yeah, uh, while 1,608 US dollars isn't a small amount of money, if you look at the huge gap, the ocean between this one here and the others, uh, I think you can kind of work out why there is that gap in price. Check him out on panipodium.cc. But yeah, uh, super stoked to be sharing these wheels with you guys. Like this is the thing I've been passionate about the most in a while. Of course, they're in stock on my website, pandapodium.cc. Uh, real recognizes real. I love these wheels, so I wanna sell these wheels. My team will give you the best service. You come to my website. If we're online, chat with us. We'll tell you how to choose the wheels. If we're not online, hit us up with an email. We'll get back to you. Uh, I'm riding these wheels. Tom's riding these wheels, and he's answering chats and uh, Instagram DMs and stuff too. So. Yeah, any questions you guys got, let us know. And uh, yeah, I hope to see more of you guys riding these wheels. China Cycling, ow.